Welcome back everyone to Let's Try episode 11 with my little brother, Nathan Cleary, Prince of Penrith and GQ Sportsman of the Year. Oh my God. <laughs> what? You like that intro? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> the three worst nicknames ever. That first 15 minutes of the second half was probably the worst 15 minutes of the season, definitely for me. But to be honest, like it's the most I've ever felt in control of my mind. Wow. He had his shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> so when he took I, his I shirt off, my shirt was going I, back on. <laughs> I do not blame him at all. <laughs> Bro, if I'm being honest, like I haven't, after that game one, I've not felt like that for a very long time. Like I was just, I had this sense of just like embarrassment. Yeah, you're one of the best <laughs> halfbacks. You're me, yeah. <laughs> the, hurry up, mate. Where is the, where is the ball, mate? It felt for weird, you, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, it felt weird. Bro, that is the most fabricated story Lies. I've ever heard. Well, this is, this is do, you want, do you want it from my version? I would love, I would love this. Yeah. Welcome back everyone to Let's Try episode 11 with my little brother, Nathan Cleary, Prince of Penrith and GQ Sportsman of the Year. Oh my God. <laughs> what? You like that intro? <laughs> no, not at all. The three worst nicknames ever, but it's good to be here, brother. How good you to been? see you again. How you been? Yeah, good, good. Um, had a good break and now it's good to be back in routine, back training and Good to be sitting opposite you again after you've been brushing me for the last few months. Let's let's clarify that. You brush me. You're the hardest bloke to get a hold of, and it's definitely not me. I'll return your calls, but uh, it's definitely not reciprocated on your end. <laughs> no, nah, I try my best, but yeah, you know, I know. you're a busy man. Busy, you know? You're a busy man. You're a busy <laughs> man. Uh, I know you're Addy boy, and uh, our great friends from Shoe Grab, as per tradition, have a look in uh, that little box of those. Oh, wow. And um, what do you reckon? Tell me what you reckon. <sighs> Lucky day, eh? How many Yeezys hey, you got? Man. How many Yeezys? A few. Of course you do. Thank you, Shoe Grab. It's much appreciated. How good is that? What do you got? Which one did you get? The I don't have these. You don't? I don't. Perfect. Lovely. Uh, they're one of my favourite. Go they're with everything. The static, the static Yeezys. Adidas. You're welcome. Let's Thank wrap, you, bro. wrap Thank it you. up, brother. How Thank good. You. Thank you, Shoe Grab. Thank you, Shoe Grab. How good. So, what have you been getting up to this off season? So, um, <laughs> nah, honestly, like during the off season, I like to try to get away. Mm. Um, get overseas. I love my travel. Um, so yeah, did a, did a bit of that. Was in the knee brace for a while. So that was um, interesting. But got went down to Melbourne a couple of times. Um, got over to Bali. It was Sarah's wedding. So that was really cool. Um, spent about 10 days over there. That's mad. Stopped in at Perth for a little bit. Um, then went to America, um, New York, Vegas. It's good. You've uh, racked up the fly points. Far yeah, I was, I was away a bit everywhere, but, you know, I kind of like doing that. Um, and then, you know, by the end of it, you're sort of ready to get back to routine and um, get back into training. So, How long were you in the knee brace for? Was that a PCL uh, injury to yeah, your left knee? four weeks. Yeah. Four so. weeks. And how is it all now? Yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm um, just trying to build up the muscles around it. Um, that's probably the biggest thing now, but mm. um, it feels pretty good back on the field doing pretty much full training. So do you still have it intact or are you going to play without it? What's the go there? I'm <laughs> um, not 100% sure, but I don't yeah. think it's, I think you just sort of live without it now. Um, so it's probably a bit more reliance on hammy, having strong hammies. Um, so doing a lot of that now with mm. physios have put me on a little, um, you know, resilience project. <laughs> so it's good. Well, you don't leave no stone unturned, that's for sure. Yeah. No. And what was the favourite part of your trip or of all those places? Oh, that's tough. That's tough. Um, You've done a bit of traveling over the years. Yeah, yeah. I try and do it pretty much every year. Yeah. Um, Sorrow's wedding was really cool. I really enjoyed it. It's um, Shirt off? Yeah, it's hot in Bali. He had his shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when he took I, his I shirt off, my shirt was going back on. <laughs> I do not blame him at all. <laughs> um, no, it was cool though. Like every, every place I went to was just so different, different mm. experiences. I love America. Um, got to go to the NBA game. That was sick. New York's really cool, cool vibe. And then Vegas, obviously Vegas, as you would know. Um, and then, yeah, it was, it was fun. Well, uh, let's touch on the grand final real quickly. Um, man, I'm still blown away by that game. I'm blown away by your game. Um, I don't know, I got a bit of a core cool memory from that FaceTime we shared. Uh, I think it was the day, day after, man. Like, just the look on your face. Just, yeah. man, I could feel the emotion coming through the phone. Um, is it, have you had a chance to reflect on that game by any chance? Ah, oh, bro, like I've tried to reflect on it, but honestly, like still now, it still doesn't really feel real. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I've talked to it with a few of the boys and they've shared similar feelings. Like that sort of last bit of the game, it just felt like it was, I was just sort of almost like autopilot. Like it felt like I was in a movie. And then it wasn't until like I looked up and we were like just after we scored that final try and we were actually in front. And I was like, holy shit, like we're actually a chance to win this. Like it just was so crazy and um 
you know, yeah, trying to reflect on it, it it's hard. Like I've watched it a couple of times, but um, I think it's something that later down the track at the end of my career I can yeah. look back on and, and be proud of. But, you know, now it's just trying to keep trying to move forward, keep trying to improve and, and recreate those memories, make some more. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great experience. Do you find it hard to reflect on like your past, you know, uh, uh, triumphants? And like, I spoke to uh, Crit on it long ago and uh, he said the same thing because it's just the daily grind, you know, you're yeah. always thinking about what's next and you're trying to stay in the moment. It's, do you find it difficult to actually reflect? Yeah, I do. And you know, for me, like one of my biggest mantras is, is staying present mm. and attacking each day as a new one, as it comes. Um, you know, I'm very happy to create those memories and very proud of them, but you know, I'm, I'm constantly looking forward. I don't want to look too far back or, yeah or be stuck in the past. I want to keep trying to get better and, and keep trying to make more moments like that. And as I said, you know, I think once the career's all wrapped up, I can look back and, and share some really fond memories with some of my best mates and um, be really proud of that. But for now, it's just, um, you know, it's just continuing the journey and, and keep going. Well, I think that's one of your greatest strengths, like being present. It's, it's a very hard trait to have and mm -hmm. very unique trait to have. I think that game kind of epitomized that, especially when it was 57 minutes gone. You're trailing by 24 points, oh, sorry, 18 points. Like what was going through your mind? Yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, you know, I think like in the past, I've not dealt with those moments the best, um, particularly when I've not been having my best game because that first 15 minutes of the second half was probably the worst 15 minutes of the season, definitely for me. Like just, just kind of with errors and missed tackles. and um, But to be honest, like it's the most I've ever felt in control of my mind. Um, wow. So that was... It's a really cool um, thing to reflect on. Like that's probably the thing I reflected on most rather than the actual game was just how far I've, I've come in that sort of space. And, you know, we do do a lot of work on it and it, it really yeah. just paid off on the biggest stage. Um, and, you know, I think when you're under the most pressure is when you're not playing your best and that's the hardest to be sort of in control. But, you know, part of me was just sort of, you know, all right, well, that's happened. It's done. Like don't, don't hold on to that too long, which in the past I have done. Um, we all do it. Yeah, exactly. It's it's human nature, but you know, I just had a real focus on what was next, and you know, um, just trying to attack it. And I think the people, the whole team around us, had the same mentality, and that was the only way we were going to give ourselves a chance is sort of forget what's happened and, and keep moving forward and um, attack that next job. Is there a specific thing to bring you back to the moment and kind of just push everything to the side? Like, I think there's a one player that stands out uh, is James Baloney. Man, that guy <laughs> throws a four pass, kicks out on the four, <laughs> and it's like nothing's affected that guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and was he a bit of a mentor for yourself? But do, yeah. would you take that kind of into that game? Yeah, in terms approach? of that, like um, me and Jimmy, uh, personality-wise, probably the complete opposite. Complete opposite. Complete opposite. <laughs> but I could learn that from him. You know, I think... I specifically remember him saying, he's like, you know, I could do two things wrong, but I know the next eight are going to be good things. Um, so that was a cool thing. And, and just being able to move on. And, you know, that's, that is kind of the mindset you have to have. Although, you know, I, I don't want to make mistakes. They're, they're just things that are going to happen. And, mm. um, yeah, I think one thing that I constantly tell myself, even through the game, is, you know, you can't change what's happened, but you can tr control the next play. And that's the sort of thing that I relay in my head. And, and I did that in the grand final and was constantly talking to myself throughout that sort of last 20 minute period. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a cool feeling to have. It's a good lesson because you're never perfect, right? And I've, my my early uh, early stages in my career, um, I just kind of struggled with that because I always yeah. wanted to go out there and have the perfect game. And yeah. if I did, you know, drop the ball or I wasn't in the right position, like I kind of get real dirty at myself mm. because, you know, you want to go out there and obviously have a 10 out of 10 game. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was a very valuable lesson. Yeah. The last three premierships, um, how does this rank amongst the three, the last one? Um, yeah, I've, I've been asked that question a couple of times and it's, it's it's pretty crazy because all of them are so different. Like the first one, we were like battered and bruised. Like mm. there was plays out there that if it was a regular season game, like they wouldn't have been playing. There would have been like six or seven like that. So we sort of limped into that and then we were just holding on, critic came out with a massive play. <sighs> then even at the end, like we were just out on our feet. Yeah. Um, they were sort of calming us up, but we just kept turning up. Uh, the second year we were, um, you know, it was probably – one of the best games we've played as a group, particularly the first like 60 minutes, mm. um, quite Complete dominant control. and sort of, yeah, had it wrapped up early. And then obviously this one had to come from behind and um, yeah, really rally. So I don't know, man, I, I can't pick my favorite. Um, you know, there's there's moments in each one, but um, yeah, it was, it was definitely special. Do you find it was uh, there was a lot of similarities to that 2020 grand final to the previous one? Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was like, like I, I, watching that. That's what it felt like. Looking back on it, it was very similar. And you know, we learned a lot of lessons from that 2020 grand final. Mm. And um, Paul, 
myself like in particular like if that 2020 grand final didn't happen there's no way i would be the player that i am today just mentally um that 2020 grand final taught me so much about not living in the past and mm. not worrying about past mistakes because before you know it the the game it's it's away from you because you're so worried about what's happening and sort of like paralyzed and um you know i, I had that same same feeling in the 2023 grand final but my mind was completely different so well, I've got a pretty unique relationship with you. I, like, I've known you since you're a skinny ball boy out in Penrith. <laughs> Been beat on the wig, you know, kicking for touch, you're putting the ball down, and now you're one of the best so halfbacks. You're me, yeah. <laughs> Hurry up, no, boy. Where's the, the, the ball, mate? <laughs> <laughs> but now, man, it just spins me out. Like, you've worked so hard to get to this position, and I'm, I'm really proud of you. Like, um, what would you say has been the best thing for you in your career? Like, what, what could you say you've learnt on the most? Um, no, I appreciate that, Sauce, and, you know, I think – you know, you and Lazio are my first roommates. Um, We're going to talk about that. Yeah, we can go into that. But <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's a full circle. Like, I honestly remember when I first came in and um, I looked up to people like you and then all of a sudden I was playing alongside you and now you're running a podcast and <laughs> I'm on here. Like, it's it's honestly crazy. And, um, you know, I think those are things I can reflect on later in life too. Like, at the moment, I'm just taking it in my stride. Yeah. But um, I think, like, it's hard to narrow to one thing that I've enjoyed so much about my, like, career so far. Um, and there's a lot of things to look forward to as well and a lot of things that I still want to do but you know it's those premierships are they're hard to go by like I remember when I was first coming into first grade I was like if I could win one premiership I'll be happy like I can retire I'll be I'll be happy but once you get a taste of it you just want more and, and well, more and um, to be able to win three like oh man it's it doesn't even feel real. Eh? <laughs> it's crazy, it's, man. It's On this side, it doesn't feel real. Yeah. But, man, you've done a, a massive accomplishment. Congratulations. Uh, speaking of Latsy and myself, uh, <laughs> there's one particular moment that brings me back. And we've got we to gotta nut it out now yeah, because yeah, yeah, there's a yeah. lot of tit for tat yeah. and my version of events. Mm. So you're 18 at the time? 18, yeah. 18, yep. Yeah. And uh, I think you got invited to train with the first grade squad that week. We're playing in Bathurst yeah. against Canberra. And um, you happened to be my me and Latsy's roommate. Don't know how you got picked to be with us, yeah. but I don't even know how I got stuck with Latsy, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but I remember one particular moment and, you know, me and Latsy were just kicking back in the lounge room and I saw your door kind of shut and I'm like, you know, I've been one of the leader guys and older guys. I want to go invite Nafe to come out for a tea. I open the door and I'm like, Nafe, um, mate, we're just having a tea. Do you want to come join us? Nah, nah, I I'm all good. Bro, that's the most fabricated story Lies. I've ever heard. Well, this is this is. Do you, want, do you want it from my version? I would love. I would love this. So I'm I'm a young 18 year old shy kid, naturally introverted. Obviously, shitting myself coming you know away with the NRL team to get paired with you and Latsy, and I'm like, oh, this is <laughs> pretty the mad. Biggest, but I'm so nervous. <laughs> to the biggest extrovert to the yeah, team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was good for me. And then anyway, you just refused to talk to me. Latsy was really nice. So um, always love Latsy. Hey, for that. is this and then, legit? Yes. I'm telling my side of the story. You, you've told your story. Sitting down in the lounge, me and Latsy, we're just watching TV. You're nowhere to be seen, of course. I think you're on the phone outside, as always. <laughs> and you just didn't give me the time of day, so... I take a, I take a great offence to that. Cause, cause I'm <laughs> that about, might be a bit of GST. Yeah, oh, thank God. <laughs> you know what, I've but, <laughs> but I did not deny you when you came into my room. I, I think was you were out busy. in the lounge room. I think you were busy. But I was out in the lounge room with Latsy. I don't know where you were, but then we all came together. And that's when the friendship grew. There's been a lot of hit ups since um, since then. So you know what? Maybe my version is a bit <laughs> blurry. <laughs> and then you end up. Uh, I think you played uh, the twenties game that weekend. Yeah, yeah. You put like seventy <laughs> points on Canberra. Yeah. And um, I think we won too. The first grade team. I can't, yeah. can't really remember. I think you did. I think you did. Yeah. What do you remember about your debut? Oh man, like so at the start of that year, I just signed a contract and I remember speaking to dad dad had got sacked at the time and hook had come in and it was sort of like oh do I want to stay or do I want to go mm. and I was like I want to stay at Penrith like it just feels like home all my mates are there mm. signed a contract for um I think it was three years and the last year of it was when I was going to be 21 mm. and I remember saying to dad it was, he was like that's a good opportunity for you to try and crack first grade that's when I was meant to be coming into the top 30 and Anyway, so I was thinking, oh, I'll just play 20s next two years and then see what happens. Um, got halfway into the, the 20s year and then I remember Hook, I was working down at Colton High School, teacher's aid. Oh, yeah. Hook, Hook called me up and he's like, oh, do you want to come in and train? I was like, oh, yeah, 100%. I remember did one week of training and I was that nervous. Then he asked me to go to Bathurst. Um, even then, like, I was still thinking that NRL was so far away, but I thought it was a really cool experience. Mm. And I think I played 20s 
Uh, might have played junior kangaroos. Yeah. Got asked to play cup, played one game of cup. Then the next week, um, Hook was like, oh, called me into his office on like the Tuesday or something and just said, oh, like, I want you to play first grade this week. <sighs> and I was like, oh, my. I didn't know what to say. I was just like instant nerves. Um, it was Melbourne down in Melbourne as well when they were like gun. I think the next day I signed a contract so I could be in the, like the top squad, got into the changing room, got like a plaque and that. And I was just like buzzing out. And I got home and I didn't even know how to tell my parents. Like these days, you know, you just ring them up. Like I don't even know why I didn't do that. Yeah. So I waited till I got home and mum and dad must have just thought I was being heaps weird because I was just wandering around the kitchen, didn't know how to tell them. Like I was so nervous. And <laughs> He's being more introverted than normal. <laughs> yeah, dad, dad goes, mate, like what's going on? Are you debuting this week or something? And I was like, he full picked it. I was like, oh yeah, I actually am. No. And they were just like, the look on their face is saying that I'll never forget. Like it was just, it just made everything like worth it. Like they were just so proud. And, oh, that's, that's and, mad. Yeah, it was crazy. And then, um, yeah, for the rest of the week, I was shitting myself. Had Mez as my first roomie for an NRL game. So that was an interesting ultimate, experience. Ultimate <laughs> roller coaster. Ultimate. <laughs> 100%. And, um, but yeah, and we, we didn't play that well in the game. But um, yeah, it was just saying that I'd always dreamt of and, Looking back on it, it's that's another thing that yeah, it just doesn't even feel real. Like sometimes when I say that I'm an NRL player, I just I don't know, it still like buzzes me out. Yeah, that's what we got in common. We both got pumped on against Melbourne on a debut. Yep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coming through, uh, who did you kind of gravitate towards and really look up to for inspiration and motivation? Like in the team or like team, um, external, whatever. Um, it might be. External was always dad for me. Um, obviously, I was in a lucky position where I was kind of had a father that was in mm. around NRL and um, he taught me from sort of a young age what it sort of takes. He didn't teach me how to play. He didn't teach, say, you need to be doing this, doing these plays. He sort of just taught me a couple of fundamental things. A lot of it was around def being a good defender because that's how you earn respect. Just kick well as a halfback and then just diving on loose balls, like little effort plays. He's big on that, eh? He just instilled that in me. And, um, you know, that was something I was really appreciative of. And I probably didn't realise it till later down the line how important it actually is. And I also appreciate that he just gave me space to grow too. Um, I started off playing soccer and, and he was happy with that. He never forced me into anything. Um, so that was pretty cool. And, you know, he's just someone that I always look up to. Um, but then when I got into sort of the NRL scene, I, I looked up to um, probably Wall the most. Um, I think you as like a, as like a, just a friend. And I think the way you treated me when I was young was like something that I really respected. Cause it was probably still a time where if you were like a, a young kid coming in, you sort of really had to earn your, earn your way, earn yeah. your stripes and, and so sort of gain respect. And yeah, you gave me time of day from the start, which was something that was really cool. And you know, I think that's, that's why we, we get along so well. But I think Wall for me was, I just, Looked up to him for his toughness. Um, you know, I still say that, you know, there's greats of the games that I look up to, you know, the Joeys, JTs, Cooper Krongs, but Wall's in that for me too. Um, he was obviously halfback at the time and ended up playing hooker, but just his toughness and the respect he got from the group, mm -hmm. just from the way he played and the way he trained. And, um, you know, saying that, that I always really loved about him and, and still do. And, um, you know, I, I hold him in the, the highest regard. Who would you say is on your goat mountain? We spoke about this like uh, internally at Penrith. Um, who would you say you looked up to the most in terms of like sports stars around the world? Around the world? Mm. Oh, that's tough. Yeah. So like so like four? Go three. Three? Go three. Uh, always loved Cristiano Ronaldo just because of, you know, Portuguese, I'm Portuguese. Oh, We're actually from the same go. place, but yeah, anyway, yeah. we won't get into that. I was only that. watching his highlights the other day. Eh? Just um, some Freaky. of the stuff he did at United was just like unbelievable, mm. like unbelievable. Um, and just the way, like longevity, the way he looked after his body. Um, and then on the back of that, I have to throw LeBron in because he's the same. Like still doing what he does at, at his age is is actually insane. Um, Are we I do here? love my American sports. So. Are you saying you're going to play till 38, 40? No, no. <laughs> I don't, no, think my body, I don't think my body will hold up. You never know. You, you know. never know. You never know. Um, and if we're just talking like like American sort of sports stars and global, like I love um, Alan Iverson as well. Mm. Um, his documentary is probably one of my favourite ones. Just like he was just the smallest, but had that sort of dog in him. and Had the swagger. Right? Yeah, had the swagger. He was just himself. Um, so, yeah. You touched on your dad before as one of your um, biggest motivators and inspiration. Um did it feel uncomfortable for you when you came back to the club in 2019, having him as your head coach? Like, what was uh, that relationship like? It felt weird, you? to yeah. be honest. Yeah, it felt weird. 
um, you know, I think we, when we first started speaking about it, you know, we always said that it was something that we wanted to do, particularly once I sort of cracked into first grade. Um, but yeah, when we first started talking about it, we just, the only thing we could really think about was the good times. Mm. And when he came back in 2019, like the start of that year was terrible. I think we started off me. with two wins and maybe seven losses or even worse. I think it was like, like I think we, yeah, we were 0-5 and then we beat Para to get our first win of the season. Yeah, something like that. And yeah, so then like, you know what the media is like. They mm. just they were just loving it, like just yeah, ripping no, hard. I, I was probably in the worst form of my career. Likewise. He was, um, you know, I could just feel that dad was really just feeling the pressure and, and not, he just wasn't himself. I think that was the biggest thing. Um, so yeah, it was, it was probably a tough start, but looking back, you know, I, I look back at a lot of um, sort of hardships through footy and I think they've actually really helped me along the way. I think it really helped both of us. Um, it really strengthened our relationship as yeah. far, not only father and son, but coach and player. Um, and, you know, now I, I look at, you know, how far we've come and, and the experience we've been able to share together. And it's, um, yeah, it's incredible. And, you know, I think the biggest thing is like, we just have ultimate trust. And, you know, now I'm lucky enough to be the captain and he's the coach and I can sort of be that bridge from players to coach. Yep. And, yep. Um, you know, we'll not always agree, but we'll always leave the room um, you know, coming to a compromise. And I think that's the coolest thing. And I think early on, I, it probably wasn't like that. Like it was sort of weird seeing him up the front. I didn't know whether to call him dad or coach yeah. or Ivan. And um, so that was a, a weird scenario, but mm. now it's, we've found that really good sort of balance. And obviously, you know, when you're playing well and, and have success, it helps. But I think that that hardship at the start really, really helped um, and shaped us into what we are. Yeah. Yeah, it makes total sense. I remember like getting a text. I can't remember exactly who from, but I was in Fiji. I just proposed proposed to my missus, mm. um, you know, kicking back, having mojito, whatever, by the beach. And I, I get a text that your dad got sacked. And I was like, why? Like, mm -hmm. It didn't make no sense to me at the time. Yeah. And uh, obviously that's 2015 season. It stands out like anything because we had the most injuries out mm. of any mm. rugby league side. So I personally felt a bit harsh. And I was a bit biased with your dad because I always loved your dad. He obviously handed me my debut jersey. So I was a bit overprotective and... I remember actually texting him and I was just like, I was actually in shock. Like, uh, anyway, it rattled me a bit, but um, I'm, that 2019 year, I, yeah, that was so tough, I know, for him, especially like, the way he had like, come to Penrith and left Tigers and um, the way the season that we had. And I almost, you know, I felt bad in a sense because I felt like I was letting him down, like the way I was playing and I took it quite personally. And actually it was the first time I actually, your dad's very calm, like mm. by far one of the mm. calmest coaches in rugby, in rugby league. I think you know that. And it was actually the first time I've ever seen him like really show a bit, more of an emotion. Yeah. Like, you know, he never yells. Yeah. Like, we never seen him yell. magic round? Oh, my God. I don't, <laughs> did you actually have to say that? Oh. How, how can I forget? <laughs> how it, it's, it's a nightmare for me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> don't, don't remind me. Don't remind uh, me. Yeah. It's no, so that, but same, bro. Like, I, I hadn't really seen him like that. And I knew that it was sort of weighing heavily on him. And, oh, and as his son, like, I felt bad too. And I think he talks about he felt like he was putting me under more pressure. Mm. And, he was feeling like he didn't even want to do it anymore. So um, I think that like the hard side of it as well was like, you know, when you're not going well and it's, um, you know, it's, it's a bit unsettling amongst like the group, there's just things going on. So I Correct. think like, yeah. yeah, like I always removed myself from like anyone like contract talks or anything like that, because like at the end of the day, me and my dad are, are two separate people. So like, if you've got stuff going on with dad that, isn't Doesn't liking it. Like, I just never wanted to be a part of that. And that was probably the hardest thing to start to actually, like, remove myself from, from those situations. That's hard. That's really hard. When do you reckon the culture started to shift for you guys? What year in particular? Uh, the end of the 2019 season, it started. Mm. Like, we had a lot of young guys debut. I think there was, like, oh, maybe seven deb debutants that year. Critter, it was like the Spencer, Spenny, um, Brian. Brian, yep. Romy. Romy? No, no, no Romy's Romy for Birdo. Uh, yeah. Mitch Kenny debuted that year. Nato. Wow. Um, probably missing someone. But yeah, there was, a, there was a lot of like young guys that came through. And you look at like Birdo, Bizza, Mitch, Spenny, Critter, who were like a core of that yeah. that next sort of um, breaking into like the premierships and, and stuff like that. And I think it started to change then. But the 2020 preseason was when it really when it really flipped. Like. We, we we trained pretty hard that preseason. Oh, Had that hard as that was um, the hardest preseason I've ever done in my life. Yeah, and I, I think we needed it. Like I think I we did. just we weren't hard nosed enough, and um, we always relied on our talent and all the yeah. outside noise. I reckon there was always a lot of hype around us. Yeah, you know all these young guns mm. coming through, mm. but we just couldn't put it together. And yeah. that twenty twenty year, we 
for me, it was just so unique. I, I played, what, 12 seasons, and that year for me was one that stands out the most because every time we trained, if it was on the field, if it was mm. in the gym, like everyone was so invested, yeah. obs obsessed. Like yeah, you yeah, hear, you got to, yeah. what's the old cliche? You got to be um, the best, or, uh, you'll be obsessed to be the best. Mm. And I felt I felt that amongst the whole group. Like how, how many times, how many sessions do you reckon we were off? Not many. Not many. Yeah, and like even if we were off, like we were still ripping in, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that was the biggest flip, as you say, like I think a lot of the time we were relying on talent and, and we could be amazing some games, but the next week would be, would be terrible. And, really didn't have that consistency. And I reckon that 2020 preseason really flipped it to, we wanted to be the team that, you know, put in the most effort. We wanted to be the best defensive team. We wanted to be consistent and we really built that culture off that. Um, so that was, yeah, that was really cool to be a part of. And, and we had a good mix of young guys coming through with them. We had people like you and Jimmy Tamo, um, sort of older guys that um, had that leadership. And um, I think that was something that we, we grew from as well as just having an actual leadership and being able to keep people accountable yeah. and, and stuff like that, which we probably didn't have in the past, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a real flip and, um, yeah. What, uh, what stands out for you the most that preseason? I don't know what's the army camp the for army me. Camp. It was <sighs> oh, hey, that was grade five chafe for me. I've never felt worse <laughs> in my life. I remember the last day we were... I remember I having this what, conversation with you on that last, oh, that last trek. I didn't know what we were doing. Like, we got woken up early and they're like, oh, yeah, we're doing like a run-walk thing. I was like, all right. And then we get dropped off in somewhere. No, like, don't even know where it is. And they're like, oh, yeah, we'll just run to Suncorp Stadium. No worries. Cool. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whose idea it was, but we're going all right. We're trudging along. Then someone goes, oh, yeah, whoever's at the back, we'll just start doing like a rotation thing. So you have to sprint to the front. I, my feet, I couldn't get them off the oh. ground. I was running. Oh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I, like, I've, my feet have never felt like that before. <laughs> do you remember we were at Suncorp? And we were like, we're in the stadium and we we're doing that meditation. <laughs> Mate, it's day four. I'm um, deprived from sleep. I'm hurting everywhere. And you're making us meditate in the beaming sun. I remember I had my eyes closed. So I'm facing onto the field. I woke up and I was facing the goalposts. So I, like, <laughs> I don't even remember how Bro, I, I just remember like swaying. Uh, I have H in my ear, like telling me things like, yeah, we're going to you know, be up here and we'll win games up here. And I'm just like, my head's spinning. Oh man, but I think that brought us really close together. Did, like yeah. at the time I was, I was hating life. Like it was so hard, but you, you have stories like this that you can look back so on. Good. That really was like a foundation for us to, to mm. bounce into that year. I agree. I feel, I feel like what Penrith do so well as well is um, uh, the education side of things, like the journaling, the visualization. Yeah. You know, when you kind of, the last thing you want to do is like, why am I doing video for? Yeah, like, yeah. I don't, I can't bother for that. You know, yeah. I'm good. I'm, I'm all right. I'll be sweet. But like, you actually make it enjoyable. And mm. uh, I feel like everyone's really accountable in that sense. Yeah. Do you, do you realize that? Yeah. And uh, I think it's a, a real environment where people can be themselves as well, but they yeah. know that the team's the most important thing. So they don't want to jeopardize that. Mm. But I think it's a really safe space too. Like we've really driven like vulnerability and, and being able to tell your story and how you're feeling. And um, I think that's gone a long way to building connection. Um, and I think that mental side of things is so important. I think a lot of a lot of teams are starting to realise it now and it's such a big part of sport, Massive, but man. you gotta practice it. I like, wish I learned it earlier. Yeah, it's well same. Like and I sort of learnt it through um, things going wrong, where now it's like sort of a bit more proactive. And I think that that like the grand final has just been is the biggest example of that. Like it's just yeah, the most control in control I've felt of my mind. And it's something that you do need to practice just as much as you're practicing the physical side of things, because mm. honestly, I reckon the mental outweighs the physical. You said before you debut that you'd be happy just to win one grand final, mm. like you've won three. Um, how do you motivate yourself to win a fourth? I think it's just constantly wanting to get better. And I think that it's just that mindset of staying present. Um, the feeling of winning is like really um, addictive as well. Yeah. Like you just want to keep doing it. Like I've lost one and won one now and obviously winning one's a lot more fun. Mm. Um, but I think it's just that battle within yourself, like each day trying to get better. Um, and it can be an individual thing, but it's also as a group, you, you have new people come in and you want them to feel that same sort of feeling that we've been out of experience the last three years. And you want to share that with them. And that motivates me. Um, it motivates me trying to help people around me, elevate them, trying to get them better, trying to constantly work. And, you know, I think it's knowing that um, you're never going to be perfect. So there's always room for improvement, but you can sort of chase that perfection and and keep trying to, yeah, ride that, ride that wave and on the up. You, you almost got lost at the end, eh? <laughs> A little bit. I had to <laughs> incremental gains each day. 100%. <laughs> uh, true or false? Do you false? know what that means? 
Incremental gains? Yeah. yeah, like little gains here nice, and there. Nice, nice. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said that the other day and the field boys didn't know what it meant. So. <laughs> well, we got a lot of young guys out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who in particular? Tito. Tito's the <laughs> He's in my old locker, I heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is it messy? No, it's just, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. A bit better chat, but... Sorry? <laughs> 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 I bought it everything if you haven't noticed it by now. Uh, <laughs> bit of true or false. Yeah, yeah. Uh, true or false, you still have another three premierships left in you. See, that's what I love about you. <laughs> Why not? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're just talking about weird how it's addictive and, you know. Yeah. Um, do you take a bit of uh, motivation out of like the Kobe Bryant's and the Michael Jordan's and uh, Tommy Brady, Tom Brady? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, I, I like looking at those sort of guys and I think one thing American sports do really well is they sort of document their yeah, journey. Love that. So like the Tom Brady, the man in the arena, the last dance, like stuff like that. Like I just froth that eh? and um see a lot of like snippets of Kobe on Instagram, just the talks he did, just his mentality. Speaks so well, man. Man, it's crazy. And obviously Fish is a massive fan of Kobe, so he's um, always pushing for us to show videos and that. Speaking of Fish, I've never seen him speak so much in, my, in his life until mm. this year. Yeah. Has, he really, has he really come out of his shell? Yeah, like he's such a great leader for us. <sighs> um, you know, I think when he talks as well, like you know when he's talking, it's not just shit High talk. substance. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's not just like feeling the space like sometimes you do. Um, <laughs> 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 no, nah, but when I'm like, I don't think um, I've seen when someone speaks, everyone is just like so captivated by like what he says. And a lot of it's just around like mentality and being mm. ruthless. And I think he takes a lot of that sort of mentality from Kobe. And it's, it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Okay. The New South Wales Blues are going to win the Origin Series in 2024. True, true or false? True. What was uh, the last series like for you personally? Uh, Bro, if I'm being honest, like I haven't, after that game one, I've not felt like that for a very long time. Like I was just, I had this sense of just like embarrassment and just like, no. I don't know, I was just like, just filthy on myself. Like I just, it was in the game and uh, like I just was sort of second guessing myself and I don't know. You I, didn't and do that. I don't know, it was, just, it was just on me. And I think I, maybe sometimes you need that and it's a bit of a refresh, you know, mm. you think everything's going quite well, you're playing well. Um, but then you get into an arena like that and you just you just don't do what you want to do. And, um, you know, that was, I think it was good for me at the time. I, after the game, like, I was just I didn't want to talk to anyone. I was just like, I just I found it really hard to let it go. And I reckon I ended up getting injured that weekend. I, reckon, I was going to say. I reckon that had a, like, part of it, yeah. Like, mind my mind body. was just telling my body. And um, getting injured actually helped me. Like, it actually allowed me to reflect and, and be like, you know, I, I don't want to – be like that in the game ever again. You know, you can go into a game, you're going to lose games, you're going to not play your best, but I didn't want to be in that mindset where it was sort of um, restricting me. And, you know, I actually wrote stuff down of just how I was feeling after the game, which I don't usually do, but I just need to try to get it out of my head. And, um, you know, there's, there's always lessons. So um, It's part of your growth. It's part yeah, of your exactly, story. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, it was obviously disappointing. Lost the second game as well. And, um, you know, a bright, bright light of it was the third one. But... Um, yeah, you know, it's it's just, yeah, we, we've got to be better. And, um, you know, it's it's been tough times in New South Wales fans for too long. And, um, you know, I'm hopefully going to be back in that arena. Love to be and, um, yeah, want to turn it around. What do you reckon of Michael Maguire? Anything to do with him? I haven't had a lot to do with him, but mm. um, I know he's sort of got that hard-nosed attitude and I think it could be really good for Origin. So looking forward to hopefully getting picked and, and being able to work alongside him um, and, and seeing what happens. But... You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's on us players that go out there and, and we've got to find that mentality to, to win games and, um, you know, do the state proud. I've got my fingers crossed for you, brother. Thank you. bit lighthearted now. Top three movies. Top three movies. Uh, go Laura Biden Citizen. L oh. Have you watched it? I have, but I didn't think that will be a top three, to be totally honest. Oh, it's good. It's, it's a good movie, good. but top good. three. I like sort of twists in that in movies. Okay. Um, I would go... Have you watched that last uh, movie that uh, hit Netflix, um, Leave the World Behind? No, nah, I saw you post it on your story, but what's, uh, what's it about? Watch is it. it. So, it's sort of like uh, Bird Box vibe. Have you watched no, that? Not really. Yeah, right. It's, I, I can't put a vibe on it. It's. Yeah, right. I was thinking what the hell was going on three quarters through the movie. And you'll think that, I know you will think the same. Like yeah, you have yeah. no idea what's going on, but watch it. Yeah. Watch it. Yeah, I, I finally figured it out, but... <laughs> It's, take, it's, it's taken almost longer. 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like those. I like those though. Those yeah. kind of movies. Um, the Hangover, the first Hangover. <laughs> oh, that's just a classic. I can watch that as many times. I remember the first time I watched it, I just thought it was the best. 
Uh, and bro, I really like the Iverson documentary. Eh? Like yeah. it's, not, it's not something that everyone's watched and that, but I just remember watching it. It was just mad. I haven't watched it for a while, but I need to watch it again. It's not on Netflix, is it? Not anymore. It mm. was. Um, it's hard to put on the spot with top three movies, but it's the, the first three that comes to my head. I'm a bit uh, old school when it comes to movies. I love like The Godfather. Um, yeah, I've, I've never watched that. Eh? Have you? No, but I, I don't really like. I don't really like old movies. Really? What's the, what are you trying to say? No, just I don't know. Just the way they're filmed. Oh, it? fair enough. But I, may, I do need to watch it. I need to open my horizons. What are you listening to right now on your playlist? I'm big Drake fan. Yeah. Um, so I've said a new album coming out recently. Uh, Phil Joe Cole vibes. J Cole. What I say? Joe. Jesus. I, just, <laughs> just, I, just, I, just, I, I do up, love J. Cole too. Sums up my age. J. Cole's just kills everything. Um, I'm always listening to J. Cole, but it's more like a rotation of like his old stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so like No Role Models, Wet Dreams, stuff like that. Forest Hills Drive, classic. Um, what Would Pluto Do by Drake at the moment. Um, did you Google these or did you like get a refresher? What do you mean, bro? No, you saw the script. I had a long drive out here. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Kid Leroy, I don't mind him for a bit of a switch yeah, up. Yeah, you know, yeah, when you sort of feel He's got like a mad it. story. Yeah, he does. He does. Um, his song Bleed, I'm liking that at the moment. Um. Yeah, I don't know. What about you? Yeah, I love Drake. Um, Joe Cole, eh? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, Drake. Um, the baby. I love the baby for baby, some yeah. reason. Yeah. I went through a massive the baby stage. I like remember. It was my favorite. I remember. Twenty twenty. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've fallen off today. Why? I don't know. It's just you just you know growing. Can I be? On, I'm, I'm starting to listen to a lot of ha um not house a country for country. some reason. I really feel like everyone's on that vibe. Eh? Yeah, I don't know. It's such a popular thing, like Morgan Wallen and that. When Luke now. Combs came out, Luke like Combs, yeah, yeah. I, I can't. I can, I can get around it, but I don't. It's not something like it amps me up. It's something like you know, kick just back, chill. Yeah, chill. Yeah, yeah, I love my chill music, but it's more like R and B sort of vibes for me. Yeah, yeah, me too. A bit of house, maybe. A bit of house, from I don't mind it. Sunset Brothers, Doof Doof. Love the Sunset Brothers, <laughs> but for a night out, like I'm not listening to that in the car. Let's, oh no, not really. No. I listen to it on the way to a game. Well, yeah, yeah, it pumps me up. Yeah, you've always been that sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> Have I? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about um, what happened with Drink West. How did that come about? Uh, yeah, so the boys like Bam Bam and um, Tyson, I sort of knew them. Um, just had met them a couple of times, and then guy behind the scenes, Jake Farragher, yep. he hit me up for a mean one day, and he said, pretty much, oh, like we want to get you on board, and that's so cool. Like, do you want to be part of it? And it was something that I'd been wanting to do for a while, like sort of get into the business space and. Um, Alcohol in particular? Or? Uh, I didn't know exactly, but I thought that would be like a decent avenue. Um, and like a fair few people were doing it, but I just honestly didn't know where to start. So it was just perfect. Like they had put in all the groundwork, like mm. they'd worked really hard and just sort of wanted to bring me on board and, and sort of diversify the um, audience they were reaching. Um, so yeah, it was, it was really cool. And then um, next thing you know, standing on a few means, my head was spinning <laughs> with all this business stuff. I had no idea what was going on, but been cool to learn and obviously Bam Bam and Tyson are, are really good blokes and um I can't yeah. see Bam Bam as business savvy bro he's good <laughs> really? very good very surprising eh? like just just really good at marketing because you've been UFC fighters you have to market yourself mm. and I think that's the biggest difference between like maybe team sports and individual like it's just you and you've got to market yourself you've got to be you know someone that people want to watch otherwise you're not getting those big fights and, and big money so He's actually quite good on the business side of things, just with ideas and, and stuff like that. And yeah, next thing you knew it, we we'll had a brewery and got the got the beer out there. So where's the brewery cool. at? Castray Road in Penrith. Oh, in the heart of Penrith, how yep. good? Yeah, had to be. Had to and be. how's your knowledge with like alcohol and the process of it all getting made? Or uh, beer, beer in particular? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, I've been a couple of times with the brewer and he's just sort of walked me through it. It's it's very complex. I don't know. It's um, I actually didn't think it was yeah, that complex. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think it, but uh, it's pretty cool. Like cool process to see. It literally starts from that and then ends up being beer. Well, I'm still waiting for an invite, but uh, I've yet to get that from you. You don't come out west anymore. You're too good for us. I haven't got an invite. Give me an invite. I'll Remember come. Remember when you um, tried oh. to move out to Penrith and you lasted six months? I, I tried to tell you. It was 11 months. I tried I to tell you. I said, I'm telling you, there's not really the fancy restaurants and the fancy cafes <laughs> and all that. You know, it's just nice people. And you go, oh, yeah, it'll be fine. Brother, I've got to get out of here. I'm, I'm hating it. 
I need, a, I need, a, need to dress up and go to a fancy restaurant. Please, for, the, for, for everyone that's listening, say that's GST. That is actually not. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually not GST. Well, I'll tell you what I couldn't handle, all right? Like, yeah, I love be- I'm very family orientated. I love being around with my family, yeah, friends, yeah, yeah. and, you know, I was a bit isolated, but, yeah. you know, beautiful suburb, um, beautiful little suburb and of Lino. Of course, you were the first person to ever have a kid, so um, that's what it felt like. Uh, it was my second kid, <laughs> and my, if you you know my son, he's oh, a roller coaster. Wind, he's the been the a roller coaster ever since he's, he's come you know into the world. You know who's now, Yoey? Oh, first guy oh, to have a kid. Bro, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Just whinging every day. What's he say? Oh, I had no sleep last night. <laughs> well, mate, you chose to have kids. Right. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> exactly right. I miss Yoey. Far out. Big string beam. <laughs> He's so good. Uh, He's a pessimist. 100%. 100%. Um, so what are you watching outside of footy? Um, I know you're a bit of a sports lover. We've got a bit of a fantasy thing going on. Funny enough, we're playing each other in the playoffs this week. Yeah. If knock you out. Bye week for me. Um <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's uh, what sport are you uh, taking a liking to? Uh, I love my American sports, so NBA, NFL. Um, they're probably my favourite. Love my football as well. You know, I'd support her, but they're struggling. Mm. Struggling, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, sort of, I love like most sports, but they're probably my top three. You went to um, what, Philly, Philly game, didn't you? Philly-Boston? Yeah, Philly-Boston. So I was mad. <sighs> it was so sick. Um, got to meet a couple of the, the players. And, what was um, that like? Oh, it's crazy. I, like, you forget how big they are. Like, yeah. you watch them on TV, but then actually seeing him in person was insane. Um, got to meet Jason Tatum, and he's just like the man, eh? Like, I love watching him. And he's just so, like, broad shoulders and so tall. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, got to meet Tyrese Maxey. He's probably my favourite Philly player at the moment, so... Yeah, I was just fanboying hard. I remember uh, LaMarcus Aldridge came out to the grand final and I just mm. gave him a bit of a tour and, you know, a bit of a brief on the, the rules of rugby league. And, man, I had a sore neck by after the conversation. <laughs> it was just like the whole time. And I'm, I know I'm not the tallest bloke, but far out. Come on, mate. <laughs> They're huge, His head's eh? touching the They're clouds. Huge. They're huge. But uh, what, what about NFL? Big Philly fan, so you know that. A um, couple of tough weeks last two. Yes. They were flying. Um, but I think maybe they need this to, to fly into the playoffs and, and you know, Work out a few jinx that they have, um, but yeah, I've I've been a big Philly fan since Michael Vick. Um, yeah, yeah. So he started it for me just on Madden. Actually, it was the first Madden I played. Oh really? Yeah, he was playing Philly. And he was just a mad running quarterback, and um, yeah, it sort of grew a love for him there. And obviously, Alan Iverson was my favorite basketball player, and he was Philly too. So, well, I love my Miami Dolphins. So yeah. fins up, baby. Yeah, Morgan. Why don't we put our, our offense together? What do you reckon? But only with rugby league players. With the NRL players. NRL yeah. players. What do you reckon? Are we going to do like draft system? We're going to do a draft system. Yeah, let's do that. I let's like that. that. Yeah. I like that. You want to go first? Go scissors, paper, rock to go first. All right. Scissors. Are we going to go scissors, paper, rock? Let's do that. Scissors, scissors paper, 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 rock. In your head, mate. I mean your head. All right, QB. I'll pick you. Wow. Thanks. Mm-hmm. No, it's all right. Feel the cactus arm, but that's right. Um. <laughs> I will go. I will go. Hmm. Needs to be someone quite tall, but with good vision. Mm. Tall halfback. Not many tall halfbacks. There's not. Not many. There's Very not. hard. Mm. Well, I mean, Adam Dewey, he's tall. Mm. Does he have an arm on him, though? Don't know. Don't know. Oh. I will go. You know, he's actually got a really good arm. That no one would pick. Mardo. Liam Mardo. You're kidding. He's not going to be your quarterback. He's going to be my quarterback. He's quite mobile, strong. Yeah, I'll okay. I'll take him. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, I've got you as my QB. My running back, I'm going to pick. Wait, don't I go first now? Oh, you do go first. Yeah. All right, my running back, I will go. I'm going to go Latrell. <sighs> yeah. Big body, good feet, pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ultimate fend. Like mm. a Derrick Henry fend mm-hmm. style. Yeah. I'm going to go Bizza. Yeah, Short, like stocky, yeah. very powerful, good feet. Yeah. Um, can break a tackle. Mm-hmm. Um, reminds me of myself. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> oh, guy. wide receiver, I'll go Fox. I will go Caelan Ponga. <sighs> okay. Good feet. Yeah, other wide receiver, who would you go? I'll go... I will go... Mm. Uh, Lord, I... Dom Young. Yes. Yes. Fast, good in the air. Yes. I'm going to go Sabi. Mm-hmm. Fast, top speed, yeah. um, long limbs, mm-hmm. very long. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. That's good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Get your head out of the gut. <laughs> <laughs> tight end, tight end. I'm going to go. I've got two tight ends. Uh, I'm going to go. Wait, with, wait. Are we doing one each? Yeah. Yeah, all right. We'll go one each? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm going to go. Uh, don't, don't. Okay. Don't take fine. mine. All right, fine. fine. All right, fine. I'm going to go um, Homoli Olokuatu. Yeah, that's good. Pure I'll go, athlete. Yeah, I'll go kicks. Same thing, pure athlete. Get the blocks in, but got good feet too. Mm. Mm. And kicker? Huh? Well, we got another tight end. Oh, Looking yeah. Two. Go, go, go. You'll, you'll go. No, it's your go. Oh, no, my go. Okay, I'll take Critter. Critter's a tight end. Okay. I'm going to take... I want to say Yoey, but I don't want him to have the satis- I don't want him to have nah, the satisfaction. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> he doesn't have the feet, nah, unfortunately. He tries to say he's a tight end all the time. He actually tries to say he's a QB. It's, it's oh crazy. my god, please! Um, who want to go as a tight end? Uh, I feel I, I like capes for some reason. Kirk Capewell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like capes. Yeah, stuff, yeah. 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 He'll like block that. for you. He'll block yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm I'm gonna go kicker. I'm just gonna go Matt Burden. The hot, biggest kick in the game, obviously. Oh, bro, that's just obvious. Like, I actually reckon he could make it in the NFL. Oh, right? me too. Yeah. I honestly reckon he could. Um, all right. I'll go Mitch Moses. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Showing love to your, your other half. I like that. So, a previous guest, your old teammate, uh, Critter, um, for our, our next segment, he wrote a little question for you. Um, and you have the pleasure to open it. So... Uh, it could be a pretty deep question, it, I, th- yeah, I feel. He's a deep thinker, I'd call mm. Will you miss him? Oh, what do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> he's a freak. But, like, you know one thing on Critter? I reckon a lot of people see him and he is, like, naturally gifted and he's got the best physique I've ever seen um, for a rugby league player. But he works so hard. Like, mm. he works so hard in his game. He's always in on days off just doing things. And um, it's actually, like, pretty inspirational to, to be around him. And, you know, I think... That's why he's going to do really well, no matter where he goes. Mm. I like that. Can't can't disagree with you on that one. It's deep. What makes you happy? Wow. Mm. That's good. What makes you happy? You know what makes me happy? Peace of mind. And I get a lot of peace of mind by being around people that are just genuine um, and they they make me feel good. So I think peace of mind is a big thing for me. I think a lot of a lot of Things that make that happen are from genuine connections and, and stuff like that. So trust. Trust, yeah, it's a big thing for me. Well, uh, you got the pleasure to write the next question. What would make you happy? What would make me happy? Um, yeah, like you said, peace of mind, but other than materialistic things. <sighs> Here we go again, another a little jab, <laughs> a little jab, you know. A genuine question followed by a jab. <laughs> That's not friendship. <laughs> oh no. Uh, what makes me happy? Um uh, my family makes me happy. Mm. Uh, that's a no-brainer. My kids really make me happy. Like, I everything I do now is is for them. Um, it's crazy. Like, your every decision, like, just is solely on the back of what, what how would that would affect your family. Mm. And um, yeah, like, I, I, it's, it's. I think it's kind of a very generic question, but it's so true, yeah, man. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I love my family to death. Like, do I'll you, do anything for them. Do you reckon that this is kind of deep as well? But do you reckon you almost start like a new life once you have kids? By far, man. Yeah. You almost start a new life because it, it revolves around them. But not like, only that, you start a new life if you enter a relationship, having kids. Mm, mm. Um, like it's just another journey you're taking, another path yeah. you're honestly taking. Yeah. I don't want to sound so motivational no, here, no, but no. it's honestly I the like truth. It. And uh, I remember when at first, when we first had Sienna, like my whole life changed mm. for the better. Yeah. And then Andre came along, and uh, he's been a whirlwind. <laughs> <So> <laughs> but like he keeps you. me on my toes. I love him <laughs> to death. And again, my my youngest now, Gia, and uh, I think the shop is. Closed now. Really? We're, we're happy with three. Uh, yeah, happy that's good three. though. You got, you know, a bit of everything. Yeah, there. so it's true though, because like when you're a young single buck, you just you know you can be quite selfish with your time, but then mm. you know as you grow up, you got to diversify it and definitely grounds you. Family grounds you. You know, yeah, it gives you balance. Um, and you definitely, you're definitely more grateful when you see, you know, you take the vi- the, the blinders off and you see life in a three sixty perspective. I feel. Mm, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's mine. Nice. I like that. Very thoughtful of you. Oh, thank you. So do I write it? Yeah, on? yeah. Write and sign, please. Okay. I actually, I would love to know your question, but I'm going to tell you. Oh, leave it as a surprise. All right, fine. You already have it in your head. Yeah. Oh wow, that's amazing. Quick thinker. 
critter took nah, a, the critter I, took almost half an hour because to I figure watch that your one. podcast. I'm a big fan of your podcast. So <laughs> oh, I know thank you, brother. Amazing. Thank you, brother. You're writing a novel. I was just about to say that. <laughs> 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 can it can be answered in a deep way, or it could be answered in a really simple way? Okay. So, yeah. well, since we're getting deep, what's the best piece of advice given to you that you could pass on to? perhaps the next Nathan Cleary? That's that's a really hard question. But I've thought of that about this like a few times um, about all the great advice I've had. But honestly, like just simply and saying that I use literally every single day is stay present in every, in every moment. Mm. And that just, I don't know, it just resonates for everything. Like it resonates with footy, it resonates with um, like your, just your personal life, just where you are, just trying to be present and, um, you know, just – being grateful for that moment that you're in. Um, so, yeah, I think a lot of time, especially the world we live in with like social media, we can be thinking about... A lot of distractions. Yeah, a lot of distractions. But only that, like, oh, I always want to be... I want that or, you know, why... Like, you know, they live such a great life rather than like just living our own life and, and being present. And, so true, man. And, yeah, not worrying too much about what's happened or what's going to happen in the future. Um, there's so much stress around and... I think when you can just remind yourself to just be present and, and enjoy each moment you're in and, and not let it pass by, then I think that, that helps me. And yeah, I love that, man. I love that. Anything exciting coming up um, in the next couple of months? Obviously, we've got Christmas around the corner, but yeah, anything got, for you? Got Christmas break coming up, so that'll be cool. Um, and then just pretty much like it's just full throttle after that. Back into training, go over to England for the World Club Challenge, which will be really exciting. Uh, yes. Where do you play? Wigan? Wigan, yeah. So they're a big... Um, big footy club and mm. big footy fans. So, um, and you know, I think it's it's an opportunity for us to- You lost the last one. Yeah, mm. and like, bro, to be honest, like, it still hurts me because they just actually wanted it so much more. And that's something that we pride ourselves on, pride ourselves on as a team. Mm. It's like, we want to always want it more than another team, but you know, St. Helens, honestly, they wanted it more and it meant more to them. So I think that's a, you know, a good opportunity for us to go over there and, and you know, try and turn it around, obviously against a different team, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. It'll be cool. And, you know, I don't mind England. Uh, it's going to be freezing then, but, yeah, it should be fun. Well, brother, I wish you the best of luck, you and the boys. Um, thanks so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. And, um, yeah, man, until next time. Nah, I appreciate it, Saucy. And I also want to say you're doing great things. I'm proud of you also. Um, and, yeah, hopefully you can keep flourishing in I'm, retirement life. I love you, brother. Thank you so much. Love, brother. Love, brother.